Yo, what's up? It's D'Angelo Russell. I'm hanging out with Cassie Athena through the lens. Um, I'm actually out here for the Wooden Award event, an event yesterday on ESPN2, where I received the Jerry West Award for the, um, the number one shooting guard in the country. What is the Jerry West Award? Because this is the first year that they've given it out, right? Um, yeah, actually, I made history for it. They did it by position awards with the best point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, center. I mean, for, for, for people that don't know who Jerry West is, he's the logo. The Wooden Award, they hosted um, a few Special Olympic basketball games, and I was coaching me and uh, Nina Davis from Baylor. So, um, I mean, we, were, we, we had a great time. I started playing at a young age, not extremely young. I was like, I'd probably say like nine or ten. My dad introduced me to it. Um, I did everything before basketball, though. I was karate, softball, football. I'd done it all. And then basketball was introduced to me, and I just ran with it. Did you have any players that you looked up to or tried to model your game after growing up? Definitely. First, I would say Mano Ginobili. Um, just his passing ability and his, 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 his thought process throughout every game. In his newer age, Steph Curry. Steph Curry's like a, he's like an icon to me. Like I look up to him. Everything he does is just, it's right. Do you think he's going to win MVP? I hope he does, honestly. <laughs> You know, that, that big brother role, I can't let him be. I gotta get one win. So that's all it was? Who, who would win more? We played like what? We probably played like 20-something games. 20-something games, you won like, like one something? Like, like one as in teens. Like, <laughs> like one as in teens. I say about, I say about 13. This is recently or like? This was like yesterday. Yesterday at, at the, the court. court. Oh, and you can get some footage of that. He was beating you right now? Dang. You can get some footage of that right now. So growing up in Louisville, you don't have any pro sport teams. Did you grow up watching the college team out there? Um, honestly, me and my brother, we were never Louisville, Kentucky fans, or we was always on the North Carolina Duke bandwagon, you know? So, like, he was a North Carolina fan, I was a Duke fan. So we grew up watching those guys. What were your goals when you were entering high school? Um, I knew I was playing with my brother, and I knew it was going to be tough for me because um, the... the um, the hype that I kind of had coming in. So, um, I mean, it was fun. Just being able to play with my brother, play alongside him, practice with him every day. And um, it was, we was a close team. Everybody was brothers on the team. Like, everybody was really close to each other. There was no um, no egos, no problems like that. So, uh, I mean, my, my, my biggest fear was just not living up to the hype that I had coming into high school. 
the Roscoe's, the very famous chicken and waffles. I don't think that's what we're getting though. We're getting something different. What's it called? Jeans Delight? Yeah. Uh, mixed greens, a thigh, potato salad, and hot water cornbread. I want cornbread. Cornbread. Every time I came here, it was meant for like basketball. Like, like a basketball tournament, a basketball award ceremony, like a camp, something related to basketball, like right now. So I never really got the time to like enjoy LA or like sightsee or do anything like that. So like me being out here to like this extra day that I'm here, I really wanna I really wanna like just be able to get to see like everything that's been that's so historic around here, you know what I'm saying? Damn. Bam, you can Google your birthday. It popped up. Yeah. Yo, that's scary. Come on, man. Bro, I love you, bro. I love you too, bro. I don't like I don't like being smaller now. I don't want to die. I haven't quite adjusted to it yet. So when he was little, he used to always, we play one-on-one, -on -one. he used to always just bully me and turn his back and just like back me down all the way to the basket and just lay it up. And I started like trying to figure out ways to beat him because he used to do that every time. And I was, I was faster than him, so like I was quicker. He probably was faster than me, but I was just quicker. And I used to, like when I would get the ball, I just to try to go around him. And then when we, got, we start getting the same size, he stopped playing me. I'm 6'5", he's like 5'10". Florida, you were so young when you moved out there. How was it adjusting for you? Um, it was hard. It was probably the best decision I ever made in my life, though. But um, just the the first the first year that I was there, it was hard. I didn't feel like anybody knew who I was. I didn't I didn't get the same treatment that I got when I was at home. I didn't feel like anybody um, looked out for me the way I, I felt like I deserved. It felt like nobody cared about me. So um, I wanted to leave, of course, after the first few months, but um, after a while I just stuck it through, start earning my spot and um, solidifying my spot for the, the, pre the next years to come after, so. Being one of the top players in high school, how was travel ball? I'm sure all the games that you were playing, people would try to go at you. Like, what was that experience like? Um, honestly, it was easier for me because um, I played behind Casey Hill, um, goes to Florida, Mike Frazier that goes to Florida, um, Dakari Johnson goes to Kentucky, um, Devin Williams, West Virginia. Uh, a lot of people don't know Joel Embiid. He played on my team, um, plays for Philadelphia. Um, those guys had all the attention, you know. I was I was really a guy that didn't really get the attention. People knew who I was, but they 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 were bigger fans of those guys. So when we played games, players were really out to get get at those guys, not really me. So it it, it paved the way for me to to um, really stand out because right. nobody was really paying attention to me. So what made you choose to go to Ohio State? Um, the relationship I had with Coach Mata and his coaching staff from day one, I um, I just clicked with those guys. I mean, I was getting recruited by everybody in the world, but um, those guys I clicked with like right away. I mean, they never told me, they never filled my my head up with everything that I wanted to hear. It was always it was always the right thing, positive. I mean, I like I said, the relationship I just had with those guys just ran a long way with. It. My college was a more of a football football school that people said so I want I had the, the the mentality to change it around I was like I want this to be known as a football basketball school not just a football school so um, that was my whole that was my whole demeanor coming in but um I mean they won the national championship unfortunately we didn't so um I mean I, I mean I always had the edge to just be different so 
How was it like playing in the tournament this year? Um, it was a great experience. Um, we came up short, but um, we had a great group of guys that bought in. I remember when we was younger, every time you would fall asleep or something, somebody would, like scare you, like, ah, like shake you. Tell him. You good? We ready to get out, cuz. Bro, you been asleep for like That's an right. hour. We in, we at the Drake concert. You see how crowded it is? How far is it from here? We here. Look at all these so, people. I mean, so where's the concert? I mean, it's inside. Inside what? The arena. <laughs> what arena is this? We well, under the Staples Center. Staples Center and Clippers with it today. It's the other one. Yeah. 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 Y'all going to the Drake concert? Ah. <laughs> 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 uh. <laughs> That's Hollywood, man. It's, it's, a, it's a blessing to be here, for real. A lot of people follow you on social media and they've been noticing in your captions you write loading. Can you explain a little bit more about what that means or why you've been posting that? Um, I mean, I'm like I said, I always pride myself into being different. So when I post a picture on Instagram or I hashtag it on anything, it's just saying like, like my, I'm loading to success. Like my dreams are right around the corner. So like once I get, you set goals for yourself and once you reach that dream or that goal, you, sh you set a new goal and you, you'll, you'll, all, you'll forever be loading. You'll never be loaded. You'll never be uh, complete. Like you'll never be, you know, you'll always be loading. So um, I, I feel like that was a, a trend that I wanted to start and I just, just created it. Um, for anybody out there, I want to tell them, be your own person. Don't, um, don't try to be like the guy in front of you. Try to be like yourself, you know, create your own, your own walkway. Because people say I had a great season, a successful season, and I give, I mean, I just stayed, I had faith in God, and I just gave the glory to Him. But, um, I mean, I worked when, 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 when other people were sleeping or other people were out partying, I was in the gym, I was working. And uh, my mentality was just always, I was better than the guy in front of me. And it, and, it, and it made me play with that cocky, arrogant edge on the court, and um, it, play, it helped. It helped me in the long run.